What is up, everybody? Thank you for checking and uh, checking out a new episode of the Baba Koa Core podcast. I am your host, Patrick C. Huerta. Thank you very much for listening. I do appreciate it. Uh, just as a reminder, as always, uh, you can follow us on uh, on Instagram or Facebook at the Baba Koa Core podcast. Also, uh, support, subscribe, and listen to on whichever platform that you do choose to listen to podcasts on SoundCloud, on iTunes, CastBox. I also found this new one called PodCoin. Um, I'm not sponsored by them, but I will just give a little shout out to PodCoin. Uh, what they do, somehow they give you like a fraction of a penny of points or whatever for every minute or every 10 minutes that you listen to a podcast, uh, you get points. And then those points, it takes a lot of points. It does take a lot of points. Those points could be put to a gift card or, or you could also uh, donate. I'm not sure how legit that is. Don't take my word on it. I'm just learning more about that uh, that platform, PodCoin. But you can donate uh, your points uh, to a cause. They have a few different causes on there. Or you could put it towards uh, gift cards. So that's on PodCoin. I'm just giving them a shout out. They put us as uh, one of their bonus uh, featured podcasts. Uh, and that's the one that I'm checking out right now. I listen to my podcast through PodCoin. Uh, so you could follow us on there. Subscribe to that one. Or just subscribe to SoundCloud, iTunes. Also put the audio up on YouTube. Uh, you could support those. And I do appreciate that. Uh, you can find everything, all things Baba Kua Core podcast related at the website, uh, www.babakuacore.com. That's where I put like any event information or all the uh, links to the platforms that the Baba Kua Core podcast is on. You can find it on there. Uh, so, yeah. Also, let me do the shout outs. As always, shout out to CBDB. You can follow them on Instagram at MyCBDB or use their website, www.MyCBDB.com. Uh, use the promo code TXMC, and that will get you 15% off all your purchases through the website. Uh, but follow them on Instagram at MyCBDB to find out where they're going to be set up. They're a pop-up CBD setup shop uh, for all your CBD needs. CBDB is the Texas Hemp Botanical Alternative Boutique and pop-up shop for all your CBD needs all throughout San Antonio. I mean, all throughout Texas, I mean. Also, shout out to Ugly Head uh, for letting us use the music for the intro and outro of this and all the episodes of the Baba Code Core podcast. Uh, you can check them out at uh, uglyheadmusic.org. They do have a new EP out, the Disembodied EP. You can get that on Bandcamp. Uh, links on that is at the babacoacore.com link website page. Also, huge shout out to 104 Manuda y Mas. They did, they'd had a, a pop up situation where they were at uh, Frankie Diablo's this past weekend. Hopefully, you got to check them out. If not, follow them on uh, Instagram or their Facebook page, 104 uh, Manudo y Mas, to find out where they're going to be set up next. So you can check out their menudo. They do. They had uh, for their local this past time. Uh, they do uh, uh, shredded chicken um, sandwiches, tacos. Uh, so check them. Follow follow uh, ten four menudo y mas on Instagram and uh, Facebook. I have two SoundCloud shoutouts. Uh, as I said, I would people that. Follow, uh, follow the Baba Cool Core podcast on SoundCloud. If they give us a like, if they like a certain episode or any episode, I'll give them a shout out. So I got two uh, this week. Uh, the first one is, I'm just going to spell it, A-Q-Y-J-E-M-Y-X-3. Uh, thank you for liking one of the episodes. Thank you for following the Baba Cool Core podcast. Also, shout out to Susan Jones. Uh, who was also a new follower to the Baba Kua Kua podcast and liked a few of our past episodes. Uh, so shout out for that. Uh, that's how you get a SoundCloud shout out. I do apologize to whoever. Uh, I have two reviews on iTunes. However, I have, I have not been able to check those out to give you a proper shout out. But thank you to the two of you that gave us an iTunes five-star review. 
Uh, I appreciate that. It just helps the the visibility of the podcast uh, to broaden the audience uh, for this podcast. So not only support me and the podcast, but the guests, future guests, past guests uh, that are have that have supported uh, this podcast or been a part of this podcast. So much love about that. Two events I got going on. My next comedy event is going to be uh, June 26th. I am part of the Six Pack of Brews comedy show uh, that's at the Middleton Brewing in San Marcos, Texas. Uh, that's June 26th. I will be doing some time on that show. Very stoked about that. Haven't been out to that uh, Middleton Brewing, uh, but I know it's a big show. They do they do it monthly, uh, so I'm I'm stoked to be a part of that. That's going to be that's going to be awesome. And also, uh, June 29th, the podcast will be set up at this event. I'll be conducting interviews. I already have a few interviews lined up, which I'm really stoked about. Uh, but I will also be uh, talking to people uh, that uh, that are part of the event, people that have gone to this event, and just talk to them and see what's going on. And this event is the return to the metal capital that's taking part at the UTSA Institute of Texas Cultures. That's downtown San Antonio. Uh, that's June 29th. This is going down between 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. Uh, this event, again, the return to the metal capital. It's a celebration of the San Antonio's 80s metal scene. All right. There's going to be live music by Bifus performing SA metal classics. All right. There is an exhibit by Tex Pop uh, of the Texas metal memorabilia it's called texas uh, or metal mayhem and that also brings me to my guest on today's episode i sat down with ruby garza of text pop who's putting together this exhibit the metal mayhem exhibit that will be uh, it co- kind of coincides with this event the return of the metal capital return to the metal capital uh it kicks off june 29th but it's going to be running uh for the next a few months uh, the Metal Mayhem exhibit at the Texan Culture, um, the Institute of Texan Culture in downtown San Antonio. Uh, the Return to the Metal Capital will, ex- uh, will also have a music- musician panel featuring uh, Larry Baragan of Hellstar, Bobby Jam- Jam- Jar- Jar- Jarzombek of Juggernaut, Al Berlanga of Cyrus, Buster Grant of Wizard, uh, Donnie Van Star- Stavern of S.A. Slayer and Nacho Vada of Bifist. And I will also, like I said, I will also be conducting interviews uh, and, and chat sessions on the Baba Core Core podcast live at the event. Uh, so I'm pretty stoked about that. And I'll have that up uh, probably next week. Uh, so, yeah, um, it's a good time. Uh, guys, I am recording uh, in a different apartment than my own there is a situation with my ac i'm having ac problems in my apartment uh we try to get it fixed we thought it was fixed and then it turns out it wasn't so it is so hot in my apartment right now and uh you know so they they let us kick it in the different apartment um just for the night uh, so we're not suffering so we're not melting so we're not sweating our balls off in the other apartment in our apartment uh, so yeah, so I'm set up in this empty apartment, which is very weird, uh, cause it's, it's looks exactly like our apartment floor, our apartment, uh, floor plan, but it's all an empty, uh, place. So it's kind of like a bizarro type of situation here. Uh, so yeah, that's where I'm at right now. And, uh, this past Friday, this past Friday, I was, uh, part of the blind tiger midnight show. Uh, which is very cool. If y'all haven't checked it out, the Blind Tiger, the Blind Tiger Comedy Club, it is set up in the basement of the Magic Time Machine. Uh, it's a pretty cool layout, a pretty cool situation. Very great community of comedians. Uh, it's a room uh, supported by comedians, ran by comedians, and uh, it's, a, it's a great community to be a part of. Uh, so I was there. I, was, I got to jump on the, the midnight show that they have. They have free midnight shows. And sometimes they have special 10 o'clock shows there. Uh, so if you don't know about it, y'all need to go check it out. Support this room. It's a great situation. It's a great uh, environment. Um, so, yeah, check it out. It's in the basement of the Magic Time Machine. They've been doing these shows for a while. And they always have good people that come out. 
but it's still like kind of a secret thing to a lot of people. So I'm giving them a shout out. The Blind Tiger Comedy Club uh, that is in the basement of the Magic Time Machine. Uh, you have to check it out. I'm, I will be hopefully jumping on a few shows here and there. Uh, the midnight shows. Uh, but yeah, come out, support the room. Uh, it'll be a good time. Uh, so yeah, that's it. I just want to do a short intro before I get into this. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, my guest on today's episode is Ruby Garza. Uh, she runs the South Texas Museum of Popular Culture, aka Tex Pop. Uh, this museum, this store, uh, this 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 place is uh, the, at uh, 1017 East Mulberry Avenue in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, seven eight two zero nine. It's right next door to Planet K. That's right off of Broadway and Mulberry, right next door to that place. Uh, so check it out. But yeah, on this episode, we got to sit down with Ruby Garza to talk about uh the new exhibit that will be at the Texas Institute, the Texas, um, the Institute of Texan Cultures. Uh, that is the Metal Mayhem exhibit that will be running for the next six months, starting June twenty ninth. Uh. Very stoked about this. The place is cool. Support text pop. Support this exhibit. Um, it'll be a lot of a lot of interesting um, San Antonio history, metal history. Um, it's so it's cool going running down like memory lane, checking out all this stuff from like the past. Uh, it's it's pretty cool. I th- I kind of feel like the new generations are not gonna be be able to take advantage of stuff like this. This is stuff from like the eighties, the late eighty eighties early 90s situation um so yeah it's kind of it's, it's kind of awesome to look back like wow this city had so much history in, with the music scene with the metal scene um so it'll be cool exhibit to check out so come out uh, june 29th to the utsa institute of texan cultures for the return to the metal capital and also you could check out this exhibit that will be running there uh for the next uh six months um so yeah that's it for this week um hopefully you enjoyed this interview had a lot of fun doing this uh I, we did it on location at text pop uh that's a cool exhibit they always have a lot of cool things going on so follow them on facebook uh instagram uh twitter all that good stuff the south texas museum of popular culture also known as text pop enjoy this interview uh enjoy this episode thank you for listening and I'll check you out next week. Uh, what is up, everybody? Thank you for checking out a new episode of the Baba Core Core podcast. Uh, today, I am at the South Texas Museum of uh, Popular Culture, also known as Tex Pop. Uh, today, I have on the episode uh, Ruby Garza. What's going on? How's it going? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me out here. I oh, appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, just uh, let the listeners know, what is Tex Pop? So Tex Pop is Planet K's nonprofit organization, and we collect and archive San Antonio music history, pop culture history from the 50s, 60s, 70s on up. Yeah. Uh, how long has Text Pop been uh, been open? We've actually been around. We just celebrated. This would be our seventh year now. Um, and Margaret Moser, our founder, um, I took over about two years ago after our founder passed away from her cancer. Oh, yeah. So you're the owner, operator, all that? Not owner, but definitely executive director, curator. Yeah. What made you want to start uh, taking this on? Uh, I really got thrusted into it, to be honest. Uh, I've worked at Planet K for 19 years okay. and I was managing our stores and I've been around everywhere. Uh, my boss knows that I was already an art lover, history lover, music lover, mm. and a subculture way. I've always loved the underground. I've always been a part of every scene, art scene, you name it. I've traveled, I've experienced, I go everywhere and... So I just got a, a real life experience for it. And while I was managing our Broadway store, um, I was always the liaison to all of our charities and nonprofit organizations already. And I was here for the birth of this and helping them establish Text Pop when the idea even came about. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, 
when the idea came about. So I was constantly in here assisting and meeting Margaret uh, Moser, who was the founder. I mean, me and her, as soon as we met, we just click like kindred spirits. Yeah. Age had nothing to do with it. We were both just free spirit, uh, a bit rebellious. And, yeah. Uh, we both had uh, similar philosophies, and she was just cool as shit, man. She was just cool as shit, and I'm beyond grateful to have had her in my life and to be able to have met her and to just learn off of her, and she was, that was one cool lady, man. <laughs> yeah, you told me a little bit about her before we started. Uh, you, you mind telling that story again about uh, that that past with her, Austin Chronicle <laughs> and all that stuff? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so if you look at the poster above over here, as she was, uh, I guess, you know, her cancer had developed, she had signed it, um, fuck cancer, keep opening those back doors. Mm -hmm. So, and I love it because I'm the same way. For her, she was a high school dropout. She was, you know, she left high school and was hit the nation just being a groupie. And, you know, she followed bands all over the place from coast to coast. And she had punk rock bands and I mean, she was a little wild child all over the place and she was settling in Austin and cleaning toilets at the Austin Chronicle when it opened up and um, she overheard them looking for a story on a band that was coming into town. She offered to interview them because she knew them and uh, he let her and she came back and submitted her interview and slowly but surely she made her way up to be a writer and she was became music editor for the Austin Chronicle for the next 30 years mm. and she helped establish the South by Southwest, the Austin Music Awards, um, anything and everything. I mean, she was a part of it. She lived it, which is amazing. Yeah. She lived it. And pretty soon, I mean, she made it all the way up. She was teaching music history at UT Austin, mm. at Baylor. I mean, I mean, talk about not having anything handed to her. Again, she made everything through the back door. Yeah. And I feel her on that. You know, I don't have a direct degree and I don't have a museum degree. I don't have any of that. Mm -hmm. So again, I feel like uh, I've always made it through the back door, making things happen. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> being in here when she was worried about what was going to happen to Text Pop, when she found out her cancer was progressing mm. and it was terminal, um, she knew that she was going to pass away and uh, was worried about what was going to happen to Text Pop. And I was here on that meeting. <laughs> and my boss, uh, who founded, helped her found this place, uh, was like, don't worry about it. Ruby's coming in here full time. Mm -hmm. She's going to take over. Like, don't worry about it. It's in good hands. And yeah. I'm looking at him like, what the hell? Did you just put me in here? Yeah. You know, I've been managing a store for 19 years. Dude. I just, what? what? Yeah. And it truly became the biggest blessing in disguise. Uh, just being a genuine art lover, music lover, history lover. Um, this was truly a blessing to be able to spread those wings and, um, just utilize mm -hmm. everything I've learned and uh, rock some shit. I love San Antonio. I love the history and the culture here. And it's so full and rich. And it's awesome that I get to pick and curate exhibits. And I mean, it's truly a blessing, dude. It's a cool job. I love what I do. Yeah. <laughs> Genuinely love what I do. I love my city. I love the history. It's awesome. But that's awesome that you were so influenced to, to pick up that torch, you know, after she, she left it, you know, she left it for you and you're, you're running with that, you know, so you kind of, everything that you do from now on, you're trying to make her proud, which is awesome. Damn straight, dude. Damn straight. And I know that even her friends will hit me up and let me know that I'm doing a good job and, yeah. you know, let me know that she'd be proud. And she lets me know herself, you know, even yeah. beyond the grave, this woman still finds ways to communicate and let me know she's around and has helped save my ass <laughs> more than a few times, you know, looking for bits of memorabilia or information and it'll magically appear the next day. Um, yeah. So, Shit, she's always around. I love this woman. That's awesome. That's awesome you have that. Do it for her, dude. I love it. Yeah. So you curate a lot of different uh, exhibits, right? So yes. uh, what? which one was like the most uh, passionate? Which one were you most influenced by? For me, for sure, the Metal Mayhem exhibit. Mm -hmm. So that one was my first baby. After getting in here, and I was in here for a month, two months before she passed away. Mm. And I was helping her on one of her last Summer of Love uh, exhibits. 
and I did a whole little black light installation room, super, super cool. Um, and then she passed away and mm -hmm. I didn't have any real direction or just anything. It was completely like, there you go, dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good luck, make something happen. And yeah. So I had compiled a list of different genres and different types of music and different shit to just uh, do exhibits on. Mm -hmm. And one day um, I'm working up in Austin and one of the accountants comes up to me. He's like, Ruby, did you know that San Antonio had a Slayer prior to L.A. Slayer mm -hmm. and that an actual Slayer versus Slayer show went down? I was like, what? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And how would I not know that? I come from a heavy metal loving family. My brother played, like, I grew up in metal and just loving music. Yeah. And for us not to know that, I mean, that was just huge. And as soon as he said that, I went on the hunt to verify, yeah. you know. Because people always talked about that, but, like, it was like, like what would you call it, like, um, an urban legend? Yeah, like, a, like, like a myth legend. type of thing? Like, and But it really went down. So, I oh, I started a, a rabbit hole of uh, digging in and sure enough, you know, come to find out and s digging and researching me and I found the original flyer, yeah. I found the shirt, I found the bootleg video, I found pictures from the night of both LA Slayer and SA Slayer. I found pictures of them doing the signing at, you know, Hastings record before the show. I saw pictures of Tom O'Reilly hanging out with uh, Bob Dog. From, you know, Slayer and Slayer. Yeah, yeah. Hanging out. Like, I found a lot of really cool shit. And that's that was the start. Once I found and heard about that, and that's where it began. So the Slayer Slayer show was the first pivotal. And then after that, it was uh, what made us the heavy metal capital. Like, where'd this all come from? Yeah. Where did it all begin, you know? So uh, it just naturally started. And of course, you know, everybody will automatically tell you Joe Anthony Luroni from K Mac Kiss um, started it all. Yeah. And realizing the story after all the research I've done, it's absolutely true. These two men were just genuine music lovers and were the first to discover. And put on the airwaves for the first time ever. Metal music, yeah. Oh, yeah. Judas Priest. They found ACDC, Black Sabbath, um, Scorpions, Rush. Like, these guys were the first ones to find this shit and put it on the airwaves. Yeah. So, putting it on the airwaves created a fan base here in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. We were the first exposed to this music. Mm -hmm. So, we became first to just uh, love this new style coming out. Yeah. And now that we have a fan base... They can team up with the concert promoters like Jack Orban with Stone City Attractions mm -hmm. and who would bring down these bands. And <clears throat> I mean, people were tripping out that San Antonio could sell out Rush and yet he'll try to take Rush to another city up north and they can barely fill a bar. <laughs> yeah, they just weren't having it up there. They weren't they weren't uh, introduced to it yet, you know. So, I mean, it became a major thing. And the thing that what I really saw was the influence of the subculture, the underground that. You know, Lou Roney and obviously The Godfather putting on all this music mm -hmm. truly inspired a generation of youth to form bands mm -hmm. and start rocking out. Yeah. You know, you can't you can't not hear Judas Priest. And once Rob Halford just has that scream, I mean, that was it. That was, I mean, just a whole generation of kids. eye. you just blew their minds. Yeah. And they went out, got guitars and, you know, started playing, started forming bands and. That's how a lot of these bands that I featured in the Metal Mayhem exhibit got started. Mm -hmm. um, so I started from about 80 to 86 era of what I'm featuring in the exhibit of the, the more underground, the local scene mm -hmm. that was going on with all the bands. Um, you know, like Juggernaut, Carry On, Bifist, of course, S.A. Slayer, uh, Heather Leather. Mm -hmm. um, and we're featuring Militia, Watchtower, just everybody in that time period. Everyone. Um so the Metal Mayhem, that's the exhibit that's opening up. It just it just so happens to coincide with the uh, the event going on, the return to the Metal Capital uh, that's going on at the uh, the UTSA Institute of Texan Cultures uh, on the 29th. Uh, but how long how long is that exhibit going to be open? So our exhibit opens. Rob is hosting his speaker panel discussion uh, the same day. We're just doing a big old event. Uh, I know Bifis is going to play mm -hmm. live there. Um, I don't know if they're ready for that acoustic, man. If you ever it's been, it's the in, first time that they're having yeah. a, a rock band, a inside, band yep. at all play. And if you've been in there, the acoustics already sound amazing inside the new institute. Yeah. And 
they're gonna man they're about to blow i don't know if they're ready for this yeah <laughs> they're gonna blow it up i can't wait i can't wait but anyway yes so my exhibit is uh not separate it is separate um we have our own feature room in the old blue bonnet theater room mm-hmm. um there's uh the exhibit will be up for six months they went for a six month run six months. yeah and that's pretty uh astounding considering i mean they have a national i mean they have a international audience yeah. you know that comes and visits and for you know us to have a bit of that history and how san antonio became the heavy metal capital of the world up for six months for everyone to see i'm beyond excited and that's all just text pop or are you teaming up with other people to do that uh no we had a lot of people contribute of yeah. course like i mean we have so many people contribute to the metal mayhem once i started diving you know diving into research and getting a hold of all these people um all the band members help donate flyers and memorabilia mm-hmm. records, uh, shirts, man, all sorts of cool shit. And I actually got a hold of Lou Roney. Uh, Lou Roney gave me a bunch of K-Mac and uh, Joe Anthony stuff. And mm-hmm. um, he gave me some platinum albums and some leather jackets from Iron Maiden and Judas Priest. And I just got back from Jack Orban. Uh, who gave me some more uh, platinum albums and I got Metallica platinum album right here, Scorpions platinum album in front of me Mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, set lists, backstage passes. Uh, There's a lot of really cool shit. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, It's just visually awesome. I mean, if you love any of this era of just heavy metal, you know, hard rock, heavy metal. Yeah. I mean, this is some awesome memorabilia you definitely want to check out. And it again, it'll be there for six months. And I'm happy that everybody across the globe. Yeah. Like put us on the spot that we deserve. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like I know a lot of people that are pretty stoked about it, you know, but why, why do you think it's important to you? And why do you think it would be important to people to see this exhibit? I mean, this is such a huge part of history. Yeah. Like how, uh, I'll talk to, you know, people that come in, the younger generation that comes in and, you know, I'm like, did you know that San Antonio was the heavy metal capital of the world? Yeah. It's like, what? No. And I'm like, let me just tell you this story. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so rich in history. Uh, and it's a huge pivotal part of our time. I mean, that was the 80s here. Mm-hmm. We were untouchable from the airwaves to the promoters bringing in the live concerts mm-hmm. to the local scene. We were untouchable untouchable Austin ain't got nothing on us when it comes to any of that scene or that era San Antonio ruled that shit and everybody should know the story of that (laughs) without a doubt without a doubt so I'm like really excited and extremely grateful and thankful to be able to uh, tell this story Mm -hmm. and have an exhibit that I worked really passionately on and researching and just you know and all the help of everyone donating memorabilia to make it happen. So I think uh, altogether, everybody's excited to tell this story and it deserves to be seen. And I can't, I'm beyond excited for a six month run at the Institute. That yeah. is just bananas. <laughs> six months. That's crazy. So, yeah. That's awesome. Do you that's, think about taking it, taking it like on the road type of thing, like maybe around Texas, a Texas tour type of thing? Well, that, I mean, that's the possibility. What's uh, what's amazing about this being there is that, you know, it opens up to a, an international audience. And if uh, other people are interested in taking the exhibit to even another state, another country. Yeah. You know, I'm sure the Germans would flip. You know, yeah. they're huge metalheads and love Texas metal. Um, so who knows the possibilities of where this exhibit can hit, end up and where it can travel to. Um so the possibilities are endless and I'm just super excited for all of that. Yeah. <laughs> so go check it out. So go check it out. That's crazy. It must drive you so crazy. Like just to, to like collect all this stuff. Cause like it's endless. Like you can find stuff from anywhere. And it's good because a lot of people, again, they were keeping it in boxes. It's up at their attics. It's in their base. You yeah. know, it's in their garage, just sitting there, not doing anything, just idly waiting. Yeah. And so here comes an opportunity to like, yeah, yo, I got some flyers. I got some memorabilia. Yeah. And so collectively trying to get all this because surprisingly, a lot of the band members themselves didn't collect shit. You yeah. know, so it was a lot of the fans that were collecting the flyers and taking the pictures. And, you know, so luckily being able to hit up enough, you know, people or put the call out that I'm looking for memorabilia. Mm-hmm. You know, people were excited to just get it out and finally do something with it. So on that keynote, you know, again, we are always collecting from every time period of any San Antonio music history, blues, jazz, rock and roll, mm-hmm. punk. I mean, you name it. San Antonio has had a scene for it. 
And if anybody has any memorabilia they'd like to donate, you know, by all means, we'd love to showcase it, do something with it. Yeah. Instead of just letting it, you know, sit there. <laughs> yeah. You think that that whole uh, the whole concept of, of collecting and all that stuff, it, it's not it's not going to continue like with the, the, the younger generation digital and stuff, digital stuff like it's 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 on your phone. It's on your computer and then it just disappears and being forgotten about. And oof, that is so true. That is beyond true, man. And That's mind blowing to think about that. It's so true. There's no tangible pieces anymore yeah there's really not so like walking around here we were looking at the posters and the one thing that like, that stood out was like it cost three dollars to go to a Jimi hendrix concert yeah <laughs> you know like that's insane that was insane and i never knew that happened like that's one thing i mean Jimi hendrix playing in san antonio like what how did i what again how did i not know about that yeah and, right those are where the story's at. You know, surely some people would be talking about, man, when I saw Jimi Hendrix at Hemisphere, mm -hmm. it's like, I haven't heard any of those stories like come out and I want to hear all these stories, you yeah. know? Um, like, I don't think it, like the, this generation, like all recently, like there's no big stories like that. Like you have pictures up there from, from, from the Sex Pistols, Sex Pistols uh, performing at Randy's Ballroom. Yes. You know, like, that's crazy. Like, I've always heard of that. I've never seen pictures. Yeah. You know, like, it's it's insane just walking around here and stuff. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, talk a little bit more about, about this place, the Text Pop Museum, Mike. So, uh, we switch out memorabilia. So, right now, you know, you saw a bunch of our permanent collections of our flyers, uh, more of our classic rock, a lot of Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, uh, you know, uh, just everybody right behind me. I have a whole Doug Soam wall um, and an Augie Myers wall. Um, of memorabilia I just scored that shirt which I love mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> but we're always switching it up so right now it's like our permanent collection of memorabilia mm -hmm. um, it's pride month and we do an extended pride event for the Thrive Youth Center we always try to raise money so we'll throw a pride I'm calling it a pride party pachanga <laughs> <laughs> Uh, which is going to go down next month on the 19th. It'll be Friday, the 19th, uh, July. And uh, it'll be a bunch of drag queens and drag kings and pink leches performing. And uh, it should be a good time for us. Uh, it's a good fundraiser. It's a fun fundraiser. Yeah. I love the Thrive Youth Center. And it's cool that we get to do fun stuff and rotate it out. And the walls will be filled. I have about 20 uh, LGBTQ artists in specific that will be hanging and showing their art so the gallery will be filled the performance area will be filled mm -hmm. um and yeah we're just gonna have a pride party pachanga i can't uh, wait <laughs> that's crazy yeah we got a few things coming up dude we're gonna have one and we're just gonna we're gonna throw our own like reggae music festival it's a reggae relaxation day yeah um, we got a stage in our backyard we have this entire backyard actually wow um and we get to throw a lot of cool events. And speaking of Doug Psalm, uh, Shandon Psalm, his son, who's in Amsterdam right now, uh, will be taking a visit. Um, yeah, he's going to be playing. Uh, he's going to be doing a Psalm cover Psalm. Oh, wow. <laughs> Which is brilliant. It's a great concept. So Psalm doing Psalm. Um, and that'll happen here in October. So we're finalizing all of that. Yeah. And um, yeah, we do a bunch of cool stuff all over the place. We're all over the place. Yeah. So it's, being being part of that, like and having access to like all this history and stuff, and like you collect it and then you present it to other people. Like, what has been one of the like with any exhibit, anything that you've been a part of uh, with Text Pop? What has been the most memorable moment or influential moment for you? That's a tough call. We've done a lot of really cool stuff and covered a lot of really cool things that have happened historically um i did a really cool uh, hip-hop month we did uh we had a bunch of graffiti artists uh represented and uh during that time we did like hip-hop movie night we did double feature movie night mm -hmm. i did a, a like a graffiti workshop for kids mm -hmm. and we did father's day pieces dad pieces on canvas oh that's crazy it was cute it was cute we had an mc battle b-boy battle um then we hosted, man, we've done all sorts of stuff. Uh, we had a really, Margaret, uh, she actually has, we always team up in November with the Blue Society. Mm. Uh, we do a Robert Johnson exhibit, uh, which is a really big, you know, thing here in San Antonio. And she has a really, Margaret 
had a really big Robert Johnson collection. She's got one of the largest Robert Johnson collections yeah. actually anywhere. And I've had people from Mississippi uh, come in and check out our collection yeah. on Robert Johnson. It's like, how do y'all not have? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Um, and that one's awesome. But I think my most memorable moment would have to be probably during the Metal Mayhem exhibit. We threw three live shows, concerts, mm -hmm. and we had 350 people in our backyard. You and had it here? Yeah, we had it here. Oh, wow. And on, uh, we created like a super group and we got all the, the head honchos from one of like every band yeah. and formed uh, the Texas Legion and had them all jamming. And mm. that was like an all-star cast. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And they got picked up from the German promoter. As soon as we put that flyer out with the lineup, uh, it got picked up from the German promoter for the Kit Festival in Germany. That's and crazy. And the Texas Legion just went and played over there in Germany just a couple months ago. That's <laughs> insane, man. It was super, super cool. And uh, having the Jarzombach brothers, uh, these two brothers, they're both like prodigies in their own. Mm -hmm. Ron Jazarbeck, a uh, guitarist. Uh, Bobby is a drummer. Mm -hmm. um, both of these guys are absolutely insane in their craft. And they hadn't played together in 20 years, you know? Yeah. Even though they're brothers, they just uh, never had time. And we uh, kind of surprised them yeah. <laughs> and brought them together at one of our Metal Mayhem exhibits. Uh, one of the times we had the, the Texas Legion playing and we put them on stage together. You and surprised them? They had no idea? Yeah, they didn't know that one <laughs> another was coming. <laughs> That's crazy. They don't even talk to each other? <laughs> I guess not in that way. I'm like, I'll see you there, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I was at the door, and they both came in and like, bro. <laughs> what, are <you> doing? <laughs> what are you Yeah. And then uh, we put them on stage, and they got the jam together, and everyone was just like, holy hell, you know, the, the Zarnback brothers are playing together. It's yeah. monumental. And it is. It is. <laughs> That's crazy. So, like the text pop, this place is is pretty. It's pretty popular, right? What is your main goal for this place for text pop? Hmm, nothing, man. Just keep on doing what I'm doing, um, and just keep featuring different eras or different, you know, music, different artists, different musicians, um, just anything and everything to show San Antonio music history mm -hmm. and pop culture history, you know, to everyone and. Yeah. And what I love is, you know, the fact that we are funded through Planet K gives me the opportunity to help a lot of other community organizations if mm -hmm. they need to host something here or, mm -hmm. you know, even if artists want, you know, shows here. So those shows, um, I give them a space to be able to do that. That's and awesome. Being able to work with, I mean, all sorts of all sorts of people. Um, the American Cancer Society I had the. Um, uh, the Comercudo, the Cariso Comercudo, Native American tribe. Mm -hmm. We used to host uh, the markets once a month here and help the tribes out. They would raise money and mm -hmm. um, go protest at the borders and at the detention centers. And so I would let them host their meetings and host, you know, any sort of fundraisers they were trying to do. Yeah. Um, we've helped all sorts of people. Just that's what I like. We're here to help. Yeah. I don't have to worry so much about funding Planet K, you know, takes care of us so mm -hmm. i um, i get to help out a lot of people and different community organizations you know yeah. do things and host things and um I you just, just wanna, really like supporting the arts the yeah people. just supporting the communities you yeah. know all sorts of different communities and if anybody needs a spot you know to host anything or you know organize something mm. let me know you know yeah. i would love to be a part and i would love to help and I love just, you know, this is San Antonio. We stick with one another. That's our culture. You know, we help yeah. one another. And um, I'm fortunate that I, I get to do that. Yeah. So. It's very rare. It I is, know. man. Super, super blessed. Do I tell you? Yeah. I got mad love and appreciation always for what I do. I'm super, super fortunate. And I mean, I'm super lucky, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, that's great. I appreciate you letting me come out here. Best of luck with this with this exhibit. Uh, let everybody know how can, how can they find you social media yeah where are we located exactly? um, we are located our address is 1017 East Mulberry we're right next to the Planet K uh, right across the Duzim and the Kitty Park on Broadway Mulberry um, we're usually open Wednesday through Saturday 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, if we're having shows that always varies 
Uh, you can find us on Facebook for sure. Uh, just uh, search Text Pop or Text Pop SA. Um, our Instagram is Text Pop 210. Um, and yeah, we're a little underground, so it is kind of hard to find us, but yeah. you got to follow us on social media and our post. And luckily, word of mouth has done us good. Yeah, right. <laughs> And we get a lot of people come to our events. It's a cool spot, man. Yeah. It's a really cool spot. Once you get in here and feel the energy, it's like, uh, you can't help but love it. It's a pretty rad spot, man. <laughs> rad. Thank you. Thank you. Well, cool. Uh, so, yeah, the exhibit called Metal Mayhem, it's going to be, uh, it's going to kick off June 29th at the UTSA Institute of Texan Culture. Uh, it's, it's, it's coinciding with the return of the Metal Capital event. But the the actual exhibit uh, is available to see that day, and then for on, the next six months till January. Months. Yeah. yeah, awesome! I can't wait to check it out. Dude, it looks uh, so cool. It looks awesome already. So I'm super stoked for it. Trust me, just go, y'all. Just go. You'll love it. Yeah, cool, man. Well, uh, thanks for doing this, and uh, we'll I see y'all next time. It. Thank you so much, man. All right.